we have a piecewise function, a function where we're piecing together two functions, um, then we might want to make sure that they meet in a way that's continuous. In this case, we have x, which is a continuous function, and uh, for any constant b, bx squared would be a continuous function. And so we just want to make sure they're this would be continuous uh, if x is less than negative 2, and our function would be continuous if x is greater than negative 2. We just want to make sure that it's continuous at negative 2. Um, well, if we look at the limit as x tends to negative 2 from below, we're getting negative 2. But if we look at the limit as x tends to negative 2 from above, then we're getting 4b. In order for a function to be continuous at negative 2, the limit has to exist. And in order for the limit to exist, the left and right hand limits would have to exist in degree, which would say that 4b has to be negative 2. So b needs to be negative 2 over 4 or negative 1 half. Then the limit will exist. So if we choose this to be negative 1 half, um, then the limit will be, um, as x tends to negative 2, we'd have negative 1 half times 4, which is negative 2 which actually um, matches the value of the function at negative 2. So the choice in this case is to make b be negative 1 half, and then we get a continuous function. Here's a, another one. We want to patch this together to make it continuous. So we need to make sure, obviously, if b is some constant, and as long as b isn't negative 1, this will be um, a nice continuous function. And this will be a continuous function. So we'll be, g will be continuous if x is less than 0. And if x is greater than 0, we just need to make sure that it will be continuous at 0. Let's see. I better assign control to one of these. I need to define the function at 0 first. So let me uh, fix that by putting a little e or equal to in there. So the value that, the, that comes out of the function at 0 is determined. Now we want to make it continuous, so we need to make sure the limit exists at 0. So let's let x go to 0 from below. And we get negative b over b plus 1. But if we let limit the, if we let x go to 0 from above with g of x, then if x is greater than 0, we're using this function. So we have x squared plus b, which is equal to b. Notice really essentially what's happening as I take these limits is I'm plugging in 0 into the one and 0 into the other because um, that's the point of interest. Now, in order for the limit to exist, these would have to be equal. So b would have to equal negative b over b plus 1. If I multiply through both sides by b plus 1, b times b plus 1 is b squared plus b, and negative b over b plus 1 times b plus 1 is negative b. So I get b squared plus 2b equals 0, which I can solve by factoring. And tells me that b either equals 0 or b equals negative 2. So it looks like there, there are two choices. One choice would be this, make b 0, in which case we'd have uh, x minus 0 is x over 0 plus 1 is 1, so x over 1 is x. So we'd be using x if x is less than or equal to 0. And we'd be using x squared if x is greater than 0. And that makes sense, because the line y equals x would just come up here. And then at 0, we'd switch from using the line to using the parabola x squared, and it would be nice and continuous everywhere. The other choice would be to use b equals negative 2. So x minus minus 2 would be x plus 2, and negative 2 plus 1 would be negative 1. That's what we'd use if x was less than or equal to 0. And if x was greater than 0, if b was negative 2, we'd have x squared minus 2. Let me simplify that just a little bit, because if you divide by negative 1, you get negative x minus 2 and x squared minus 2. Okay, here we just have a line whose intercept is whose y-intercept is negative 2 and its slope is negative 1. So we're using that one. And then x squared minus 2 is the parabola shifted down. So yeah, that's continuous as well. So two ways to make that one continuous. One more example. Ooh, we've got uh, two possible problems, right? This, if a and b are constants, we've got a line, so that's going to be continuous. And we've got a parabola, that will be continuous, and another line. So we're, we're trying to match up a line and then a parabola in the middle and then another line. So um, we need to make sure that this will be continuous when we hand off control. So we've got to check continuity at 0 and also continuity at 2. 
So let's start with at 0. If we take the limit as x tends to 0 from below of g of x, then we're talking about the limit as x tends to 0 of ax plus 2b, which would be just uh, 2b. If we take the limit as x tends to 0 from above of g of x, if x is greater than 0, although close to 0, then we're going to get x squared plus 3a minus b, which would be 3a minus b. So to make things match up, we're going to need 2b to be the same thing as uh, 3a minus b. Let's see, that would require that 2b equal 3a minus b. So if I add b to both sides, 3b equals 3a. So b has to equal a in order for this to be continuous at 0. Now for our function to be continuous at 2, where we change from using the parabola to using this line with slope 3, we have to check the limit as x tends to 2 from below, which would be the limit of x squared plus 3a minus b. If x is tending to 2, we're going to get 4 plus 3a minus b. And if x tends to 2 from above, then we use this, because x is greater than 2. So we have 3x minus 5. Well, 3 times a number really close to 2 would be really close to 6. Close to 6 minus 5 is going to get closer and closer to 1. So we need to have, for continuity at 2, we need 4 plus 3a minus b has to equal 1. Um, we know already that to get continuity at 0, a and b have to be the same thing. So that would be uh, 4 plus 3a minus a has to be 1. So 4 plus 2a has to be 1. So 2a has to be negative 3. So that means that a has to be negative 3 halves. Since b has to be equal to a, b has to be negative 3 halves. So that will match up my functions so that they're both continuous. Now, just to check it, let's write out what g of x is. If uh, a is negative 3 halves and b is negative 3 halves, then we have negative 3 halves x. 2 times negative 3 halves would be minus 3. So that's what we're going to use if x is less than or equal to 0. We're going to use 3x minus 5 if x is greater than 2. And between 0 and 2 up to including 2, let's see. If we put, we have 3a, that's negative 9 halves. So we'll have x squared. 3a will be negative 9 halves. And then minus b would be minus minus 3 halves. It would be plus 3 halves. So that's going to be negative 6 halves, which is negative 3. So we have x squared minus 3 in this case. So we can go ahead and graph those functions. Let's see. First, we're going to be using negative 3 halves. That's negative 1.5x minus 3. I'll just graph it from off the screen to the left up to 0. And then our next function is x squared minus 3, which we use from 0 to 2. And then finally, we have 3x minus 5, which we minus 5, which we use from 2 on off the screen. So when I get those um, graph together, you can see what I've done is I've pieced together the line and then the parabola and then the line.